Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, I'm going to talk about the care and feeding of a Python environment. This is based on a blog post that I did where I talked about how to install Miniconda and manage the Python environments that are installed under Miniconda. What's great about Python environments is they allow you to install several versions of Python Maybe you have TensorFlow that requires 3.6 of Python. Maybe you have a package that you have to use from some data processing that requires a Python 2 environment. Maybe you want to install TensorFlow 2.0 and not completely destroy your working Python TensorFlow environment that you use for your day-to-day -day job. This is what the blog post talks about. It gives you all of the commands. This is really almost my notes from learning how to do all of these various things with Python myself and configuring these environments. Because I use these environments all the time to keep different experiments going and not messing with each other. And of course, if you find this kind of thing interesting, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so that you're notified of any additional videos that I create. And this is the blog post that I am talking about. I go through a variety of commands that you can use to create, update, install, do other things, and set up Jupyter Notebooks with your Python environment. A link to this is contained in the description of this video. A quick way to just jump to this is just search for Jeff Heaton space care and feeding Python. So I'm going to do this from a bash terminal on a Mac, but this is really going to be the same thing in Windows or Linux. The couple of times that's just a little different, I will definitely mention that. So here I am, I can do Python. So here I am, I can do Python and I see the version of Python that I have installed, 3.7.1. That's great, but 3.7 is not, that's great, but Python 3.7 is not supported by the latest version of TensorFlow. So what I've done, and I demonstrated this in another video that I will link also in the description, is I show you how to create a TensorFlow environment, and currently, at least as of, of February 2019, TensorFlow requires Python 3.6. So to do that, I created an environment to handle that. So if I do conda, this gives me a list of my environments. You can see I created one called TensorFlow, and I also have base. Base is where I'm presently at. And it shows you the directories that these are installed on. Now, if you're on Windows, this is going to be C colon and in your user directory somewhere. But here, this is where these are actually installed for my computer. If I want to make use of one of those, that I like the TensorFlow one that I created, I'll type source activate TensorFlow. Now, source activate TensorFlow is what you do on a Mac. On Linux or Windows, usually it's just going to be activate TensorFlow. Notice now my prompt has changed. It's TensorFlow and the rest of my prompt like it was. If I now do Python, mice mice version you'll notice i'm 3.6.8 so now i have access to a lower version of python and one that i was able to install tensorflow into and to get back to base you just do source deactivate and you'll be back in base for windows and linux it would just be deactivate and now we're going to actually create an environment this is something you'll want to do frequently I've done this in other videos where I showed you how to create that TensorFlow environment, but basically you will do You essentially do conda create name tensorflow python 3.6 well i've already got one of these created so that would give me an error let's do something a little bit different let's create a python 2.7 environment so just to um just to review that command it's conda create minus minus name pi 27 i clipped the part where i talked about that that's the wrong command this is all that wants to install and this takes a moment because we're installing an entirely new Python 2.7. And these are all of the packages that it puts in there just by, by default for you. Okay, now to activate it. I like to do source activate. Uh, you can also use conda directly. This is probably a little more direct. 
like they recommend there. I'll stick to what I've been doing and do source activate Py27. And now we are in Python 2.7. I will do Python minus minus version. And you can see now I am in the Python 2.7 version. I can do source deactivate. Another very handy thing that you will sometimes want to do is update all your packages to the latest version. Maybe you haven't messed with Python in six months and now you're ready to do something completely new. And you've already got this environment, you don't want to necessarily install everything new, but you just want to update everything to the latest version. You can do conda, conda update all. Now be careful with this. If you're doing very active work in your environment, this could introduce some breaking changes. Because when they update some of these Python packages, they don't necessarily pay that much attention always to are they going to break things. Hopefully they deprecate add deprecate warnings before they actually break something, but you never know. This can take a moment because it is gathering information on all the packages I have installed in my TensorFlow environment. And I do have some things that are out of date. I'll live dangerous. That updates your packages. If you truly want to update your Python to the latest version, you do conda update Python. Now this would be dangerous. Now look at what this is doing. This is going to update my Python 3.6 to Python 3.7. Now this would not update, say, Python 2.6 to Python 2.7. It's not going to change your top version number. It won't upgrade 2 to 3, because that's really dangerous. But this is going to update 3 to my 3.6 to 3.7. And TensorFlow won't work anymore if I do this. And considering I'm in my TensorFlow environment, yeah, let's not do that. Stand down, Anaconda. Now, this is very important. As you create these new environments, so let me go back to my 2.7. And again, that's just activate Pi 2.7 on Windows. Maybe, so when I go into Jupyter Notebook, I would like to have this kernel available to me. I just created this. If I popped into Jupyter Notebook, this, you may not have this available. So, or you would not have this available because... I think it's unfortunate, but by default now they don't add these to, to Jupyter. And this is a common question on, on Stack Overflow. I see this frequently, and unfortunately it's changed a few times in the last two years. This is currently how you add this. So what you would do is first activate whatever you want to add, so Python 2.7. Then you do pip install, and we're going to pip install IP kernel. If you didn't see that last command that I entered, that was it. It's just pip install IPY kernel. Now the next thing that we're going to do is actually add it. So we're going to do Python minus M. That is going to, oh, and by the way, that is a single equal. Apologies there. Okay, so that command, Python minus M, IPY kernel install user minus minus name PY27, this will add my Python 2.7 environment to Jupyter, and it's now added. Now you'll see the evidence of this. Ah, I don't have Jupyter installed, so conda install Jupyter. Install it in base, because we're going to use it out of base, and then that is going to allow us to open up the 2.7 version. So let's install Jupyter. This will take a moment. Now let's run Jupyter Notebook. All right, and here we are in Jupyter. If we do new you'll see that Pi 2.7 that I just created. If I had not done those steps that I showed you before where we were running the um, the kernel, that Pi 2.7 environment would not be here in Jupyter. So this is really neat. You can create all these environments and then put them into Jupyter where you'll make use of them. They can also be made use of in IDEs like PyCharm, which I plan to do in my next video. All right, Jupyter is running here. I'll go ahead and just break that because I want to continue using the, the terminal. Another really neat thing that you can do, this does not work perfectly. It's kind of good in theory, but it usually works pretty well. You can essentially export your environment and then move it to another computer. So you've created this nice environment. Maybe I really like my TensorFlow environment on this Mac and I want to move it to another Mac. You can do that. And it will export it to an actual file that is a YAML file and you can import it on another machine. Now this is not cross-platform. I mean, in theory, it sounds like a good idea. I could create my really nice whiz-bang TensorFlow environment on my on my Mac and export it to Windows and Linux because I mean I, I use everything. 
but it doesn't work out that well. The file is compatible, but what will happen is some of the library versions will be just slightly different on Mac or Linux and just enough to trip you up. But let's go ahead and export one. So I am in my, my home directory. I am going to go ahead and export my TensorFlow environment. First thing is to activate it. Just activate if you're in Windows. Now we're in TensorFlow and we'll do this command. And this command, conda env export greater than tfenv.yml. If I want to look at env, or if I want to look at that file, this is the file. Notice the name is right in there. That's TensorFlow. Channels, defaults, these are all the packages. Now this is where you would run into trouble. If I tried to, say, install this onto Windows Lookout, because all these different versions, there's no way that every Body has kept Windows and Mac perfectly up to date for that. Just not going to happen. You you'll get you'll get dependency not found errors. Because believe me, I've tried it. So now you've got that file. You would take that file and transfer it to a different computer, or even use this on the same computer. Now, if I want to import it, I would do conda env create. This would create it. Now this will immediately give you a name violation error because I've already got a TensorFlow on this machine. So that's the command though that you would run on a different command. You can also use the minus minus name to give it a different name if I wanted to call this say TensorFlow2. In fact, let's try just that. Conda env create name TensorFlow2 from that file. It's now running. This takes a moment. I'm effectively creating a duplicate of my TensorFlow 2 environment. I am effectively creating a duplicate of my TensorFlow environment named TensorFlow 2. And there you have it, the care and feeding of a Python environment. I do this kind of thing all the time. I'll have more videos on my class and other things that I do with Python. If you find this interesting, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.